Hello and welcome to the Serrano Show and the New Jersey Falls News. We are here with Passaic County's County Clerk, Christian Carrado. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'll shake your hand. Nice to meet you. Okay, we, I wanted to do an interview with you because I wanted to find out you have been in office for how many years? Four and a half. Four and a half. And uh, you have an election coming up? Yes, I do. Okay. So we wanted to find out from you when you just got started, all the things that you have done until now and then going forward. Okay. So I'm going to start with, before you were county clerk, what was your occupation? I am an attorney and I have, I am partners with my father and a law practice in total work. Yeah, how long have you been a lawyer? Uh, 22 years. 22 years? Yeah. What kind of law do you practice or have you practiced? We have a general practice firm where we do real estate, wills, um, and we represent the town of total work as well. Okay. Um, what made you decide to become county clerk? To run for county clerk? Mm -hmm. um, the opportunity was presented to run for office. It was something I'd never done before, and I decided I was going to give it a try. Okay. Well, was there anything appealing about the job? It, it seemed to be the, one of the more natural fits um, for somebody with my background, um, an attorney by trade, and I had a little bit of familiarity with the office, knowing that where your deeds and mortgages are filed because we do a lot of real estate uh, transactions with the law practice. And I knew a little bit about the office too, uh, just because of elections. Now run down for me exactly what are all the things that your office handles. So the office is somewhat diverse. And I actually, once I got into office, learned more about it. There's three separate branches within the office and they have really no related features. Most people know the county clerk because it's where you record your deeds and mortgages. And the office is responsible for recording all the property records in the state county. The records back, uh, date back over 175 years. Um, that's the registry division. You have your clerk division where we process passport applications. We issue notary oaths, um, veteran IDs. And if you have a business in the state county, um, you would register it with the clerk's office. And then there's the third office, which is the election division. Um, any county petitions that are filed are filed in the office. We're responsible for the drawing of ballot petitions um, for elections. We prepare the sample ballot and the face of the voting machine. We oversee the vote by mail process. And at the end of an election, uh, the election night, we count the votes and we certify the election when it's over. Sounds like a lot of work. We also do weddings <laughs> every time as well. Okay. Nine, over 900. 900 people, you've married 900 people. Yes. And that's your authority as county clerk. Right, it's a statutory provision that we have to make to do it. So, and as well, they can go into the different cities or choose you as well. Correct. Mayor or county clerk. Correct. Um, when you got into this office, you took over from Canberra, yes. also a lawyer. What, did you, did you find anything that you had to change? Were there, were there problems? Did you bring new ideas? What happened? Really, what, anything that we, I've done in the past four and a half years is built on what was started by my predecessors. One of the things that Karen did um, when she was in office, she started back uh, scanning the property records in. So we continued that forward. So she had done 20 years of records it makes it easier to search, easier to access, and we continue to do that. And there were additional documents that we scanned in and they're available online. So really, anything we've done over the past four and a half years is just built on what already was there. Maybe they had an outreach program, but we expanded it. Or maybe they were open on Saturdays. We chose to go to each town and offer a mobile passport service. Um, do it during the day and we do it at night located throughout the county, just making it a little bit easier to bring our services to the community. So you enhance the office? Yes. Kind of like a hybrid now, right? Right. We try to do everything. And and I have to say both Karen and Ronnie were very helpful in um, being accepted. Ronnie, who's Ronnie? Ronnie Hopkinson was the county clerk before Karen Brown. Okay. Um, and you know, they would make themselves available when I had questions. What, what, are, what were some of your challenges when you went into that office? The first thing is that you're walking into an office and you don't know anybody. You don't know any of the employees in the office. And the first thing I had to do was make sure I learned the job because I can't expect somebody to do something if I don't know how to do it as well. And it's my job to fill in if need be. So the first year 
here, it's a, it's a, there's a learning curve. You're learning how to do almost every single position within the, the, the you know, makeup of the office. Um, and then I hit the ground running and went to work. So suppose I'm, I'm trying to get a passport, because like you said, you do elections, you do businesses, registration, uh, deed registration, passport. Did I miss something? No. Okay. So if somebody had a problem with a passport and says, look, you know, I need to go to Mexico, so give me this, what happens? So you would need to know how the quickest way to expedite a passport and you know, the customer fills out the application, but you're there to assist and answer questions and make sure it's done correctly, that they have all the identification that they need, the documentation that needs to go with it. You know, one of the things that I've done while I've been there is we have the three different offices, but we've done a tremendous amount of cross-training. So that if somebody happens to be out in one department, we can plug somebody in from another department. And it's worked out extremely well on that. Any person within the office can work within another office and we'll assist each other. And it makes more of a teamwork approach. And that's one of the things I've concentrated on doing. And while I was doing it, I made sure I was up to date on what the procedures are. The laws are always changing. Or, uh, there's changes in election law all the time. There's changes in the passport um, application the process all the time with, uh, under the federal government, under the State Department, and they're always enhancing or upgrading or changing the way we do things. So you're constantly learning, um, no matter which department you work in, but knowing what everybody's doing on a daily basis makes it a little bit easier to oversee the office, too. Now, because the passport is an identification, you know, have you had fraud? Have you had any attempt to fraud? If we think we see something that there may be a question about, there's a, a process for us to notify the State Department. If we have something that's questionable, you know, we'll take the documentation, but we can notify the State Department. Have you had enough chance to do that? I personally have not. The but office has had opportunity. So you've had reported people before yes. trying and to sneak into the system? They're pretty good on picking up things. They all change the way maybe you do an ID and they've noticed that there's fraud and they're in constant communication too we'll letting us know what's going on or that they've had issues with certain types of documentation. As much as you know, once they upgrade something, a better standing learn how to do it too. So, so the criminals try to stay ahead of you? They always do. Um, they're pretty, the State Department uh, constantly does refresher courses where, and our staff Congratulations. You got a perfect score. A perfect score from that's a reflection on my staff doing their job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, as far as deeds are concerned, you said you have the deeds of every house in the state county? Yes. You do? Mm -hmm. So if, I, if I'm looking up a certain property, I don't need to relatively need to go to the city, I can go to the county. Yes. And you'll have the deed. That, that is, yes. Your, all the deeds in the state county, anything that affects title or property is recorded in the county. So every time that property is sold, recorded in our office so that there's a permanent record of the title of the transaction. And that's been going on for almost 200 years in the state county. That's a, that's a good uh, investigative tool for me. I didn't know about that. Yes. So if I'm looking for a property that's changed hands six times, like you you have that? Yeah, the information. We don't do the searches for you, but, but you the information is accessible. Okay. Now, we just had an election, and there's always some kind of problems in the election process. Tell me. About the last one. Some of the things that we've dealt with in the elections, I think that were unprecedented, was having two hurricanes while I've been in office. Um, that has been a unique experience and something that we never really had to deal with. We had email voting in the state of New Jersey, which we've never had before. Wait, when did email voting start? It started um, in the general election of 2013, and it was only for the purpose of that election. So I could be from in, in Mexico on a computer yeah. and vote? It was for displaced voters, those who were displaced because of the hurricane, um, but they could allow in the state of New Jersey with certain protocols put in place. Um, we do do voting by email, but it is typically for your military voters. And there's a protocol that's in place, and that's why we were able to do it last election. Um, but one of the things you do when you email vote is you give up your, the privacy of your vote. When you email, because you can do an Oprah and get that information. Well, it's not available by Oprah, but the <coughs> voter does sign it. You know, there's no way to do it. 
How do you know it's the same person on the other side of that email? Who's voting? Yeah. It's typically that it's your military that's been doing it. No, I meant like in the last case with Sandy. We didn't know who was actually doing the voting, other than that there's, there was a signature process in place where we verified the signature. Something that we're not, is unprecedented and they only allowed it because of the situation in Hurricane Sandy. I don't know that we'll see it again, at least not for a few years. Okay. Your office, county clerk, is separated from the superintendent of elections. As well as the Board of Elections. Well three, separate separate three separate offices. Three separate offices. We overlap and we work together, but we each have distinct functions. What is the difference between your office and the, the um, superintendent's office? The superintendent is in charge of voter registration and voting machines. We're in charge of vote by mail, so we work with them to make sure that somebody is registered to vote. Um, the Board of Elections is in charge of training the board workers we all have completed functions to work together, but separate, separate access to the statewide voter registration system. They can do certain things, we can do certain things. Um, we overlap or interact as whichever of the same function. So you have no jurisdiction over the, the voting machines when somebody wants a recount? If they go to court for a recount, we're involved. How are you? Um, because on election night, the cartridges are counted by us, the results from the voting machines and the cartridges, and Difference between your office and the election commission? You said New Jersey Election Commission? Yeah, the one with John Curry is the It's John, uh, you mean the Board of Elections. Board of Elections. Board of Elections has four commissioners, two Republicans, two Democrats on election day. They count the vote by mail. So they the have election. to vote by mail. That's correct. Now, when they, remember the, the Rigo Rodriguez thing where he, 48 votes was missing and they found it. That was their responsibility to count those votes. Yes. Okay. And when he sent someone, allegedly, to hand in uh, ballots, and they were not supposed to do that, did he also hand it to them or to your office? We don't get voted ballots, but because we process the vote-by-mail ballot, um, we receive the applications, and there's two distinctions between the office, whereas we have messengers that are authorized by a voter to pick up their ballot, However, the messenger is who the voter was authorized to drop off their voted ballot to the Board of Elections. There's no restriction on how many they can drop off. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same person. So if they were dropping off the voted ballot, it would go to the Board of Elections. So they got in trouble because they were dropping off ballots that was the, the, the voter did not necessarily tell them to drop off. I think the issue was that maybe necessarily they had So they dropped it off to you. Yeah, they dropped it off to the Board of Elections. Board of Elections, again, who counts it? And they found a problem and it went from there to another problem to another problem. We started with complaints by voters. Complaints by voters. investigation started. Now, you're a Republican. Yes, I am. Running on the Republican side. Correct. Okay. Now, who, you're running on a ticket. Yes. Who are the other members of your ticket and what's their status? The two freeholder candidates are John, I don't Ka John Capo. Yeah. Claudia Chavez. Claudia Chavez. Chavez. Mm -hmm. And John? Capo. Capo. Okay. So it's you, mm -hmm. it's Capo, it's Chavez, and who else? That's it. That's it? There's the three of you? There's only two freeholder seats up this year. Okay. And uh, is, is there anybody in the top of tickets that's pulling you as well or, or supporting you? There's congressional races this year. Who's running for the Senate seat on the Republican side? On um, the Republican side, it's Jeff Bell. Jeff Bell? Yes, Cory Booker. Okay. So is it Bell, you, if I'm going to talk about it, Bell? Yeah. Well, depending on which town. So in my hometown, <coughs> it's Hillary, but it's Freeland Highlands. Who happens to represent our district. And then I'll be next. 
Is he running this year? Okay. So it'd be him, it'd be you. So if you wanted to build a team in a line, that would be the team in the line. Okay. So what do you think about your opponent who's running against you? And you don't have to call his name. No. I don't know that much about him, um, to be honest. I've met him a couple times, and he's in the church. He has been so active all for So what do you think the people feel about you after being there for four and a half years? Well, I hope they think that I've done a good job because I've worked very hard the past four and a half years to, to do right by the office. Um, I don't really care what party you're from, but we can serve the public and I try to do that. And some of the ways I've tried to do that is by making it easier to access our office, whether it was enhancing the website so that you can go on and get the answer to a question. A lot of times people don't pick up the phone anymore. They'll go online to see if they can find the information. So if we think we can provide that information online, we've done that. We put all our forms up there. When the election happens, we put the results up as quickly as possible so that you can access it. So that was a simple thing that we did. And we also expanded our hours. Um, we open earlier now than we used to. We open up at 8 o'clock so you can run in, do whatever your transaction is in the office, and be work on time. Um, we did that by less time, so there was an additional cost to the taxpayers. We've reduced staff over the years. Naturally, food nutrition, people have retired, but continue to increase in the standard of services. And I'm proud of that. We put the satellite office up in Montague for our county residents, since it is hard to get down to the satellite. Yeah, satellite office. It's a satellite office. How does that work? We have it staffed full time, Monday through Friday. It happens to be in Montague on the the Board of Social Services is there as well. And then we're also open on Saturday and month so that you can come in and do whatever transaction you wanted to do. We can do everything that we do in the office in Patterson, our main office, with the exception of election full time. So whereas you can drop off your application, um, we can't issue a ballot at this time. That's just because it's not recognized as an uh, election site. So that's one of the things I would like to do in the future. Yes. Make sure that that office is fully functioning as an election office. So you could come in, fill out your book by mail application, get your ballot, vote, and drop off your ballot. The same way you do down in Patterson. It would just be a lot more convenient for all the county residents. What else would you like to see in the future for this office? I think that's one of the main goals is to continue to do the outreach that we're doing. We have a set schedule right now with most of the towns, the example being that today, from 11 to 2. On the first Monday of each month, we're in Thompson Lake. So we have a set daytime schedule that we've implemented with about 10 other municipalities in the state county. Of course, we're always open full time in Patterson and Montague. But making our services accessible has been incredible. Um, it brings back revenue to the county since we are a revenue generator and not the government tax dollars in my office. So Wait, the county clerk makes money kind of like the post office now, right? We, we do make money like the post office, whether it's from the real fees that we process or the uh, passport applications that we process. Um, we're strictly fee based and we are the second largest generator of revenue in the state county. So you don't get a government salary? No. Well, we, we get a salary, but uh, the expenses in our office are covered by the fees that we bring in. Okay, so you have a, a, a money coming in, yes. and that is used to pay your staff. It goes back to the county fund. Okay. From that, it covers what our expenses are for the year, so that everything else that we need goes back to the county. So within the last two years, we've given them an unanticipated revenue of over an extra $5 million, which is what they had already budgeted. They got an extra $5 million from you. Yes. Now, the budget for your office, how does that compare to the income that you're getting? We get a percentage, and we're under the 2% cap like everybody else does. Um, if anybody knows me, I'm rather frugal, and I know that things are expensive, so you can either save money to You didn't want to say cheap, me. right? I'm not cheap. <laughs> I'm not cheap, because sometimes you got to spend money to make money, and I understand that. But if we don't need it, we don't buy it. Because it's, I'm a taxpayer in state county, too, so the more in line my budget is, the less money is going to be. We're not going to put that you're frugal. 
approval. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I said, we've, we've reduced staff over the year. You really want me to say frugal? Frugal's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't want to say cheap, because <laughs> I'm not cheap at all. Um, okay, so you balanced your, your office well. You've given it $5 million over, over what you they recommended from you? Or what budget? they anticipated. So when they do, when County does their budget, they... So if they anticipated $20 million, you gave them 25 Right. Do you know the exact numbers right now? Obviously, Each year it's varied. Um, first two years and, and it was based on the real estate market. You know, the revenues were not quite what the county expected. And then in 2012, um, it was much better. And so, all that. Okay, so what else would you like to see from this office? One of the things that we, we started and we've done it as a local service and a full-time service too is the veteran ID program. And it's a free photo ID card for our veterans. Um, in the state county, there's over 23,000. 23,000 veterans? Yes, and yeah, it's not an amazing number yeah. in our small county. It allows us to get discounts at the Trump Depot and Lowe's. We have about 150 businesses over the past four years that we've um, worked with and that offer discounts. I'd love to see that expanded. The program continues. And to, to, to be a veteran, you have to be like, you have to come up from the war. And like, if I see somebody being somebody up and I Across the street, and I go help them out, and no. No, doesn't qualify. No, it doesn't. But the, um, you know, it's a small thing to a small thank you to those who have, you know, committed their twenty-three thousand lives and you know, time to serving our country. Yeah, it's and we do it with our as a shared service program too with the county veterans officer. He comes to the outreach events that we do. So if they have questions or um, are looking for information, he's right there to answer. So it's been really a homework program over the year. Um, we want to make sure we get each that. It's, what, it's also available for active duty officers and you know, serving the military too. Now this might be an odd question, but you know, I, I, I go through the streets of these communities. Some are clean, some are not. Some are struggling, some are not. Well, I guess they're all struggling these days. Um, your office is in Patterson, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Do you have any effect on what's going on in Patterson right now. As Germans crime and education, helping people, just in their daily lives. In their daily lives? You know, we always are about, you know, one of the things I stress is that when you deal with people coming into our office, to treat them with kindness, the same way you would want to be treated. And I found that our staff is incredibly generous. We work with the Blue Star Moms, um, collecting donations for the military, related to wounded warriors, Whenever there's a cause, you know, we're always there. And just by treating people with respect each day, so I think that's one of the kindest things you can do. Um, it's unfortunate what's going on in Patterson right now. I mean, you see a lot of homeless. Um, you see a lot of young kids struggling with drug addiction. We see it every day down by the courthouse, and it's unfortunate. Um, work with Catholic Charities on a personal level, and as well with the Veterans Program. Okay, so I'm a voter in Wayne. Yes. Why should I vote for you? Well, being proud of the record that I have for the last four and a half years, um, one of the towns that we go to on a regular basis is Wayne. Um, like I said, we make our services available to the residents, not just what's convenient, you know, or 8.30 to 4.30 Monday through Friday down to the building in Patterson. And I've done the job over the past four and a half years fairly. You, you know, regardless of what it is, you know, followed the law, done what's expected. So I've, I've tried to go above and beyond that, whether it's in treating people with kindness or watching the bottom of your dollar. I've done, I've done the job and I think I've done it well. Okay, so I'm a voter in Patterson. Mm -hmm. I have issues. What are your issues? <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a city where I, I want people to care about. I've got, you know, a city where there's no jobs or hardly any. I've got people with open canisters just hanging out drinking on the street corners. 
I've got crime and shooting just about you know every other day, few days, weeks. I've got all those things, and you come in the middle of all this and you say, "Vote for me." I want you to tell me why. Well, first of all, you should always exercise your right to vote, and my feeling is if you don't, you don't have a right to complain about anything. I work in. I'm there every day. Um, you know, I see what's going around. If we can help anyone, we're there to help them. But you know, it, it's been it's been a tough four and a half years for that city. We don't just do our services in a bubble at the county administration building. We go out within the city and do it. So we do go out and do IDs at the library. We do go to the veterans' housing on 18th Street. Um, we're part of the community, and we want to say, you know, we want to help them. There's a lot of good people in the city of Patterson. And they just go to work every day and do their jobs, and they do the same thing. So, seeing that you're employed in Patterson, you drive through and you see things that are issues. But I think where I'm limited with you, not the other officials, is that you have to function in the capacity of your office, not outside as, for, as far as crime and other things are concerned. But you are running into the other people who may have those concerns. So I think I'm going to save my questions for them right. because I think you're limited. You're not an officer. You're not in education. You know, things. So that's why. But I just want to know what your thoughts are um, because this office is in Patterson. And personally, I think everybody who either lives or works in Patterson should pay attention to what's going on there and have some kind of interest. You have to because not only do I work in Patterson, but I live next door to the city of Patterson. Um, so what happened? Some of the problems that are going on, at least to an extent, with some of the homelessness, they're kids from the suburbs. Coming into Patterson, because I've seen that on the street. It is, and we see it. So it definitely affects everybody. Okay, so I want you to, to just, just open up and tell the public why they should vote for you. Now, before you say that, I know you mentioned that when your office functions, it does not function as a Republican or Democratic office. It functions, and I want you to go from there. It functions as a county office that provides services where the public come first. Come first. Um, I've stressed that over the last four and a half years and will continue to stress that. People coming in, it may be for, to have their notary oath administered, or maybe it's a vote by mail application. I always tell everyone, it can be intimidating to walk into that big building down on Grand Street. So the first thing we're there to do is to help. And plus they search you when you go, and I get searched all the time. Yeah, they search us they, too. We go through the same <laughs> security that you do. I'm, like, I'm the president of it. I don't care. I don't say it, but they know who I am. I have to take my belt off. So do we. And we're okay with that. Yeah. And it's done for our protection. But so they're intimidated to go into this big building. Right. Just sometimes, especially on all these citizen applying for your passport and we're going to take your naturalization papers and so a lot of people are, are nervous about that um, when they're going to reassure them what the process is give them an extra copy of your naturalization papers um, we're there to make the process painless you know, and pleasant for them at the same time and answer any questions that they have if it's not our office and we can direct you to the correct office we're there to do that too we're there to help we do serve the public in each capacity. During elections, we're there to make sure it's done correctly. It's fair. It's not Republican or Democrat. Um, if it was partisan, maybe the Republicans would have done a little better over the last um, four and a half years. But I am an attorney first, and I took a note, and I take it extremely seriously. So I'm going to follow the law. I'm going to follow the statutes. I'm going to be fair. Yeah, because you went up against your own party. For that office, I did. and I was in oh, court, and you were like my office is first before the party's first. That's right. Because I saw you in the in the, uh, in the courtroom, and I was, I was you were there, and you had your own attorney saying this has to be done this way at this time. So, and, and so you have you have elections, you have uh, deeds, you have passport, you have uh, what am I saying? Veteran IDs. Veteran IDs. You have yourself. Which is which is what and the weddings you stay the weddings we do. And, and your your office is one is running 
um, five million dollars more perfect than it should be because because you got the. Well, you know, at the end of the year, how we do this year, uh, it's a little tougher, but yeah, the money. You don't. You don't have to because yeah. we have an election coming up in November. Yes. November second. Fourth. Uh, November fourth. Mm-hmm. Okay, November fourth. Huge difference. Tuesday, right? It's the first Tuesday. Okay. So, um, so like I said, one hundred percent functioning. You don't need any help. You don't need somebody to come in there and yeah, mess things up. Is that what you're? That right? Oh no. It's, right. I mean, it's the, the office does run well, and I'm very lucky to have a staff that works hard. And, you know, they're not political you, people. The, the good people. thing is that also you keep closing your staff. Do you have a great staff? I mean, the reality is they make sure I learn you know, the job when I speak, and, and you're only as good as those who work not for you but with you, and that's what I think of it as a partnership with people that I work with. And so we work well together. percent and it's been running so Christian Corrado and what's the other two? Capo and Chavez. Chris Corrado, Capo and Chavez. Just remember the three C's. Three C's, that's good. Uh, how, how am I going to move? Oh, the camera. The camera is a three C. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> three C. Uh, November 4th, Correct. Uh, 2014. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you.